Welcome to Astro Tina. Today's video is on the 10th house. I will go over each placement in the 10th house and what that means for your career. So today's topic is the 10th house and everything that um, it means for your career, your profession, your status. Uh, it's the house of karmas that's assigned to you. Uh, your past karmas, how you're bringing it forward into this lifetime and what um, the 10th house is not only just your profession it's a very small part of it there's also lots of other karmas um, to you which are assigned to you in this lifetime and how we complete these karmas how we dispose of those karmas and how we do the hard work uh, that's associated with those karmas that's all seen by the 10th house and the 10th lord now, there's many planets that do work really well in the 10th house. Now, looking at the 10th house, it's it's the house of Saturn, which is a cold, damp place. Uh, and just opposite the 10th house, you're looking at the 4th house, which is the house of peace, tranquility. Um, it's the house that can give you um, the luxurious things of life, your home, vehicle, the good things of life. Now, if you're looking at karma in the sense that um, you know, your works, uh, your life's work, and you're looking at the 10th house. If you're looking at it from the perspective of, you know, I am doing what makes me happy, then you're actually accepting your karma. But if you're grudgingly doing your work and you're not happy with your nine to five and the duties that you're doing um, in your life, then in, in some way you're not accepting of your karma. So you're fighting against um, what you're here to do. Okay, so if you were to look at your 10th house and actually um, know what is your destiny, what it is required for you to do in this lifetime, that will also not only help you um, dispose of your karma, but it will also help you to bring happiness to your life because that's what you're truly here to do. But remember, you're not going to get any karma, which is perfect karma. Now let's look at Ketu in the 10th house. That's a dream world. That's sort of like Alice in Wonderland. Uh, you know, so Ketu in the 10th house is very dreamy. It's also aligned perfectly with imagination and dreams. Um, you know, so this is also someone who cannot stick to a nine to five job. They change their jobs frequently. And if you're looking at Rahu being placed there, okay, uh, Rahu Ketu is also a very very special placement here okay because they do uh, the unimaginable things here okay so things that you would never think of that's what rahu does in the 10th house so if you're looking at sun with rahu that's uh, a very unique placement as well you're looking at someone who uh, knows how to work with authority, but they also want to do the unimaginable, okay? This belongs to great leaders. So uh, 10th house, Rahu Sun is a great placement. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi, um, other, um, you know, uh, great leaders that brought great change. If you're looking at Moon and Rahu, Rahu Ketu uh, with luminaries, okay, in their charts, those are true charts. Those are people that are uh, looking to change the world. Um, and you'll see that um, what they bring onto the world stage, it's noticed by the world. They do make a name for themselves. So when looking at Mars here, Mars is quite happy here. It's exalted here. With Mars, you get karma of blood or lineage, or you get land through Mars. So this is someone that can work with land, real estate, development. We're looking at occupations that have um, any kind of aggression or planning uh, associated with it. So the army, uh, you're looking at the police force, you're looking at... Um, uh, martial arts and um, people who can be uh, in sports as well. Now Mars um, actually likes being in the 10th house because Mars likes challenges and because 10th uh, house is ruled by Saturn which is a cold house it actually feels challenged here. Here Mars utilizes his energies in solving problems and facing challenges related to whatever is placed in the chart. But mind you, he's not happy here because Mars loves to show off his power, his ego. He gets satisfied because of that. 
Here, Mars is using all of his energy to solve problems. So Mars in the 10th house, you're, you're given karmas that are related to your blood, to your lineage. Now, um, looking at Mars being uh, the sign for blood and lineage, and it being in a very cold house, the 10th house, a vod pit, uh, cough, all of them are, are present there. So basically, it's a muddy place. So now Mars being a very strong planet, it's the only planet that has the energy to cross this muddy uh, area of your chart. So with all the fiery planets, um, they all actually work really well here. Now the sun is it's in its full strength here. It's in Digbala here. Because the sun's disciplined here, it likes to get up and it likes daily work. So now with the sun here, you're looking at um, you know your karma of management you're established um, sort of like a kingdom for others. So you're sort of the ruler, the lion. Um, and again, this is a fiery sign in a cold house. It does very well here. Now, if the sun here is powerful enough, if it's not afflicted in any way, uh, there will be a crowd of people coming to this person uh, asking for this person to solve their problems. So this is a chart of a problem solver. So the 10th house sun management, 10th house Mars challenge, um, what we're looking at. So we're looking at sun and Mars. Um, these people do not sit freely. They need to constantly be doing something, one thing after another until they get totally, completely exhausted. Um, and they should not work so much because the sun and Mars don't know uh, when to stop. So you have to tell them. Uh, so this is a chart of somebody who can be a workaholic. So now looking at Saturn, no matter how big, no how, matter how difficult the job is, I have enough time. That's what Saturn says, okay? T Saturn is about doing things slowly and properly. And, um, you know, let's, let's do things one day at a time. Let's start from somewhere uh, from the bottom and work itself up, okay? Saturn believes in hard work. So Mars wants everything very quickly. It wants everything done fast. And Saturn doesn't care, it likes to take its time. So it doesn't really care too much about time. It cares about the effort. Uh, Sun wants consistency here, um, like Martian energy as well. Um, so, but Saturn uh, says, let's take first plans. Let's make the plans. Let's take work uh, slowly. Let's look forward to doing things properly. Uh, because Saturn is in its own sign here. It's in its own comfortable place. It's comfortable being cold. Um, so Saturn's really hardworking. And Saturn here gathers resources. And his work is very stable, unlike Mars, um, who says basically, you know, if this doesn't, uh, if, this, if this work lasts a couple of years, that's good enough for me. Whereas Saturn is looking for a long time because Saturn is a, it's a slow moving planet uh, and it takes a long time and it doesn't mind taking a long time. Whereas Saturn, um, whereas Mars wants everything quick. Uh, it likes to do things quickly and it also wants very quick results. So the sun's priority is quality, but the other thing is that the sun also likes to show off. It likes to show others that things are being done, things are being handled, who's in charge. So if it isn't visible, the sun actually thinks and feels that it's not happening because others are not able to see it. So there are some placements where if your um, workplace, what you do as an occupation is visible to other people, you'll do better well. That's with the sun. It likes to be visible. So anything that's behind closed doors, anything that is not visible to other people, the sun placement here doesn't prefer that. It likes to be visible. It likes to show itself and also likes to show its efforts and what it's uh, accomplishing here. Now, Saturn here also plans well. It gathers resources and then it gathers multiple people to do the work together. It likes to work in groups. Whereas Martian energy likes to work alone. So when looking at Mars as sort of like an army commander, he wants everybody to work to walk behind him, whereas the sun is the king, so it doesn't want to really listen to anyone. He wants to run his own ship. He wants to be in command here. 
Whereas Saturn here listens to everybody, it takes input from everybody and it distributes the work and it does it and it likes to do it humbly so that everyone has their own way of doing things. It accepts everybody's way of doing things. It likes, again, to work in a group effort to accomplish something very big on a bigger scale. Now you can see that the planets placed here, there's no wrong or right. It's just that these are the characteristics of these planets and these are the characteristics that's bringing out in how you work, where you work, and how you like your work done and what type of tasks are uh, completed in, in which way, in what nature um, do you perform them in. Um, so according to your chart, that is how these energies will show up. Now Sun in the 10th house, if you ask this person, you know, let's everybody work together in a team, he's going to say, no, he won't want to do it. Um, it's not my job. Uh, I'll show you how to do the job and I'll show you how to get the job done and then I can manage it. But I'm not going to play as a team uh, member. OK, they like to work on their own. And Mars will also say the same thing. It'll say, I'll do my work on my own. I'll do it fast. I'll get it done. But I'll not work with any team members. I'll prefer to work on my own. So now let's look at Jupiter. Jupiter here is debilitated. Um, it's a very mild planet like Jupiter, placed in a very difficult, cold house. Um, and, you know, um, if you're looking at a very cold environment... Um, for this sort of mild planet. It, it's a little harsh for this planet. So it, it has trouble here. It has trouble performing its duties here. Uh, getting things done becomes very difficult for Jupiter here. Um, so it can give troubles. It can also give uh, issues with health here. Another thing is uh, Jupiter is overly optimistic here. Okay, um, It doesn't quite see... Um, it doesn't quite see the duties um, that need to be done in a very practical way because this is a very practical house. It's an earth um, house. Um, and here, being very optimistic, um, it, it's, it has a difficult time getting things done on time. It leaves it sort of like, you know, oh yeah, don't worry about it. We can get it done. It, um, decisions don't get made based on reality. Um, their thinking is not so uh, practical here, okay? Jupiter is really uh, simplified here, um, and he says, oh, I'll see to it in the future, okay? Uh, Jupiter cannot also fight here. Um, it needs a malefic aspect uh, in some way to help it out, um, and that's why sometimes you have to bring those aspects in as far as remedies, so like a stone or... Um, you know, Rahu stone or a, a Saturn storm is usually recommended here uh, because these natives, they tend to hesitate to speak for themselves. Um, and Jupiter's uh, ineffective until it gets conjunct conjuncted uh, or aspected by uh, Saturn, Rahu, or Mars here. Um, it, it tends to not be able to speak its truth here which means it kind of holds back. So for instance, if um, you know you are in your own business and you, you have Jupiter in your 10th house, you will hesitate to ask for the money that's due to you because you just don't have the heart to ask for it. You can't be ruthless in business. Um, so a business person uh, with Jupiter here has a difficult time uh, collecting their money. They have a, collect, uh, a difficult time asking for, um, you know, extra funds that they need to collect or uh, to charge extra for their work. Um, if you're working under somebody here, um, then you have a really hard time asking for a promotion. And why is Jupiter so optimistic? Because Jupiter likes to expand. Jupiter likes to advise. These people are really good at coming up with good strategies uh, these people make good policies, but if Jupiter is debilitated, no one respects them. They think that their advice is very simple and it's not, um, it earns no value here. So when you have uh, Jupiter with Mars in any way, so for instance, uh, if it's Jupiter Dasha, Mars Antar Dasha, that will be a good period for you. So when you connect Mars to the 10th house, the natives' uh, friends will support you. Um, because Mars is exalted here in the 10th house. 
Now, if you have Saturn with Jupiter, um, your advice is not going to work. Um, you have to be a little bit harsh, a little bit rude. Show how it's done. You have to put, it's not just about the advice. It's also about the work that has to go into it in order to get things done. Here, Jupiter needs the bitterness of Saturn. This is why in Lal Kadab, uh, if you have Jupiter in the 10th, they'll tell you don't go to the temple because it's it's going to make you even sweeter and you can't be so sweet with Jupiter in the 10th house. You need to speak a little bit more crudely to get things done. That's the problem is you're too sweet and things just don't get done. So you need to speak a little bit more bitterness in order... Um, so the Saturn, the Mars energy, Rahu energy brings a little bit that harshness, that rudeness, that aggressiveness that you need in order to get things done. Jupiter in itself is a very sweet planet and it's a very humble planet. So it does things, it'll ask you nicely. And if you don't do it, it's not going to do anything about it. But if you have the harsher planets with it, then it has the capacity to get things done. Jupiter in the 10th house, um, it cannot control people. That's why they make great advisors. And even as advisors, people don't take their advice so uh, seriously. They tend to take it very lightly until, you know, something goes wrong. They tend to get um, very taken for granted in um, their their um, work capacity, in the advice that they give, in what they have to give. Um, they do get taken for granted because they're just too sweet of a person and it's hard to be, um, you know, sweet and also in the workplace at the same time. You're going to have people stepping all over you unless you have that harsher element. For example, if you have a Jupiter teacher, this teacher uh, is so nice, they're so lenient that they don't have control over their class. Everybody does what they want. They get away with doing uh, whatever they want. But if you have a Saturn teacher or a Rahu Mars teacher, these people know how to take control um, over the people to get uh, their duties done. So here the malefic planets, Rahu, Mars, Saturn, they actually support uh, Jupiter here. So it's actually a very good thing to have these aspects or conjunctions uh, with these malefics. So Jupiter alone and in the Kendra houses, um, it's advised for them not to do business because they don't have the harshness that it requires to do business. They, they're not clever in the way that a business person needs to be clever in order to um, grow their business. So teaching jobs are good. Advisory jobs are good. Uh, consulting jobs are also good. Um, anything where, uh, you know, you require optimism, you need expansion. Those are great for Jupiter. So if you have Jupiter in the 10th, the 7th, or anywhere in the Gendra, um, or with any beneficial planets like moon or something like that, um, you're very beneficial to um, the people you work with. So if, even if you're standing outside of a, a, a empty business, um, there's going to be crowds standing there soon because you're bringing in that expansion for that business. So even though you can't do it so much for yourself, you do bring good luck for the people you work for. But Jupiter in the 10th house, it is debilitated here and it does require support. So now looking at Mercury and Venus, um, associated with the t 10th house. Um, Venus's job is to refine significance uh, of whoever it's sitting with. And Mercury's is hyperactivity with whomever it sits with. And remind you, um, Venus and Mercury are very fickle planets. They become uh, somewhat like the, the, the placement they're sitting with. So if they're sitting with Rahu, they basically amplify that energy they become more like that energy less like themselves and more like the planet they're sitting with and venus is more like a filter uh, it refines things whereas mercury is more like hyperactivity um, so it brings hyperactivity to those um, planets that are sitting there and less of its own significance okay so one is kind of like a reaction whereas another one is kind of like a filter okay um, and Mercury makes fast reactions. It makes things faster. Um, here, Mercury thinks, oh, I'll do many things at one time, um, and we'll just keep going. 
um, you know, one thing after another, after another, um, it's, it's a, a lot of hyperactivity. Whereas Venus, it's looking to refine. So it's looking to do one thing, but doing it really well, looking at every little detail under the microscope. Mercury also likes organization. It likes to organize things very well. So if Mercury in the 10th house also gets support and is with Jupiter, they also work very well together and it helps Jupiter in its expansion. So remember, Jupiter is debilitated in the 10th house and it grows. It doesn't know reality. But if Mars, uh, Mercury, these planets are with it, um, his work just doesn't end. It just keeps working. So again, workaholic type mentality. So here you can be doing multiple things at one time because Mercury just doesn't sit free. It likes to do multiple things at once. But if Venus gets involved, it doesn't like to do multiple things at once. It likes to go classy. It likes to go single. It likes to do one thing at a time in full detail. And it likes to beautify. It likes to bring out um, the good qualities of anything. So here you're always thinking of how can I make it better? How can I bring more perfection to this? So with the Rahu in the 10th house, this is someone who wants to do um, things that are unusual, things that haven't been done before. Uh, Rahu is a continuous energy, okay? So in, it's, it's like uh, Jupiter magnified, okay? It likes expansion, but very fast, whereas Jupiter likes slow expansion. So if you have Venus and... Rahu, then you're looking at microscopic type of detailed work, which is very, very important. So somebody like a microbiologist, somebody who looks at the minute, very, very small detail, um, you know, people who are looking at, uh, who work in labs. Uh, now, Ketu in the 10th in its own house, um, it wants to, um, you know, it wants to do things its own way. Um, and Ketu is also... Um, looking for moksha right so it's not really looking for work um and it doesn't like nine to five it will not do nine to five um it likes to do things on its own time and it doesn't like routine um they don't want to do the same thing over and over again um they don't like regular work regular work habits they don't like routine um they also um will change their occupations or their jobs frequently they don't stick to one thing and if you're looking at moon in the 10th this is a peace loving planet um, it's a planet looking for happiness its karma is all about happiness and how to bring about happiness um, so it's looking at at um, those uh, types of feelings uh, being brought into their profession so things that will bring people happiness like eating so they might go into food consumption transportation um, but again there's fluctuation in their work so they might again change their work frequently they want to do something that's interesting something that's going to bring happiness to the people and also again um, you know something that's going to control their mood um, okay so uh, artists um, have this placement as well you know again being an artist is unstable work um, so you know things that actually um, have to do with emotions um, have to do with moon in the 10th so now if you're looking at uh, multiple planets in the 10th house so um, you're looking at Saturn, Mars, Moon, whatever planets. Uh, remember that Saturn is a natural lord of the, the 10th house. So its significance is going to be more. Um, then you're also looking at the sign lord. Um, and you're also looking at the ruler. Um, so again, you know, um, how things are aspected, what conjunction you're looking at. Um, look at how the 10th house is impacted in totality, not just by looking at, you know, is there just one planet there, but look at um, where other aspects are coming in. You know, if it's in conjunction, then look at both of the planets or three planets and look at um, what is influencing those planets as well. So the 10th Lord in Lagna works related to humans, whereas for instance, uh, if it's related to Venus, it might have to do with clothes and luxury items. 
So with Venus, your karma is to like help other people look good. You're designing clothes, you're designing houses, you're um, anything to do with how things look. And if you're, um, if we were talking about Mercury, that's um, things related to education and studies and creating good relationships with other people, providing good news, helping your siblings. The tenth lord in the second house, that's karma related to your family, your religion, your finances. Um, anything to do with the face. So now let's look at the 10th Lord in each house, each of the 12 houses. So when the 10th Lord is in the first house of your natal chart, it signifies a strong connection between your career and your identity, your personality, your self-expression. Um, so here, your career-driven personality, your career is a significant part of your identity and you're highly motivated to achieve success in your chosen field. Your professional life strongly influences how you perceive yourself. You often exhibit leadership qualities and may be seen as an authority figure. Your ambition and confidence make you stand out in, a, in your career. Uh, you may also be known for your personal brand and the way that you present yourself personally and professionally. So your, per, your public image is clearly tied to your career. Um, you might prefer to be self-employed or take on uh, entrepreneurial end endeavors. Uh, independence in your career is essential. The state of your career uh, can also impact your overall well-being. Achieving success in your chosen profession can be a positive effect on your health and your vitality. You're likely to gain public recognition and fame for your career achievements. Your career path often involves being in the public eye. So if you have uh, your 10th Lord in the first house, you are a career-driven personality, you have leadership qualities, you're very aware of your personal brand, independence and entrepreneurial skills, career and health connected to your well-being as well, and public recognition. So now let's look at the 10th Lord in the second house. Um, your career and professional success are closely tied to your financial matters. You may excel in professions related to banking, finance, investments, uh, managing resources. Your professional success is connected to your reputation and how you're perceived in the financial world. Building and maintaining a good professional image is vital. Uh, your income and social status are intertwined with your career. You may see financial gains through your professional efforts. You might work in sectors related to finance, accounting, um, financial management. Handling money and assets can be a significant part of your career. Your career can uh, lead to uh, material success and you may be known for your financial acumen and ability to accumulate wealth. This placement often indicates a practical and resourceful approach to your work. You're likely to be uh, and take disciplined approaches to your career and financial matters. The 10th Lord in the third house, uh, your career success is closely tied to your communication skills. You may excel in roles that involve writing, speaking, using technology to convey information. Success may come through local networking such as your neighbors, siblings, within your immediate community. Short trips and local business ventures could be significant. You're likely to have a versatile approach to your career, which can be uh, adventurous in a rapid changing work environment. Your career could involve interactions with your siblings or relatives. Collaborations with them may play a role in your professional life. Professions related to sales, marketing, advertising, or other media may be favored with this placement. The third house also relates to problem solving. You might excel in careers that involve troubleshooting or finding practical solutions to issues. The 10th Lord in your fourth house. Your career may revolve around the home, family, real estate matters. You might work from home or have a strong connection to your family business. Career success is linked to your emotional well-being. Finding a sense of security and emotional satisfaction in your work is crucial. Uh, you may excel in careers related to caregiving, nurturing, any profession that involves taking care of others, such as social work or counseling. Careers in real estate, property management, or construction might be favored. You could find success in matters related to land and property. 
You may prefer roles that are more uh, private or behind the scenes. Working from the comforts of your home could be beneficial. Family support and dynamics can have a significant impact on your career choices and your success. Your family may play a role in your professional life. So now let's look at the 10th Lord in the 5th house. Your career is likely to involve creativity and self-expression. You may excel in fields such as arts, entertainment, or a profession that allows you to showcase your talents. This placement often indicates an entrepreneurial spirit. You might prefer to start your own business or be in a leadership role where you're, uh, you have creative control. There is a willingness to take risks in your career. Speculative uh, ventures or investments um, could be part of your professional life. Professions related to children teaching education uh, will be very appealing to you. You could find success in roles that involve mentoring or guiding others. Uh, the fifth house is associated with fame and recognition, so you may um, gain public attention and acclaim in your career. Your career should be something you're passionate about. Finding joy and personal fulfillment in your work is essential to you. So the 10th Lord in your 6th house. Your career may revolve around serving others. You could excel in professions related to health care, social work, or any job that involves helping and serving people. You are likely to possess a strong work ethic and you're willing to put a lot of effort to achieve your career goals. Daily routines and discipline play a significant role in your personal and professional life. This placement often signifies attention to details, which can be uh, valuable in the roles that require precision and organization. Careers in healthcare, such as nursing and medicine, can be uh, something that you favor. Uh, you could also excel in roles related to fitness and well being. The sixth house is associated with problem solving. Uh, making you adapt to addressing and resolving work-related challenges. Your relationships with coworkers and subordinates are important in your career. You can take a leadership role in your uh, work environment. The 10th Lord in the 7th house. Uh, your career may involve partnerships and collaborations. Success can be achieved through working with others, such as business partners or clients. The seventh house is associated with public image and how you're perceived by the public. Your career success is closely linked to how you present yourself and maintain your professional reputation. This placement often indicates strong uh, diplomatic and negotiation skills, which can be uh, very advantage. It can give you an advantage over uh, in your career, especially in fields that require interaction with the public. There might be a connection between your marriage or significant relationship and your career choices. Your partner's support and career aspirations can also play a role. Uh, careers related to law, legal matters, um, those are something that you can favor. You may find success in roles that involve meditation, uh, mediation, and uh, conflict resolution. Um, balancing your personal life and your career is essential with this placement as maintaining harmony in both areas uh, are important for overall success. Tenth Lord in your eighth house. Your career may involve transformation, uh, crisis management, or profound change. You might excel in professions related to psychology, counseling, fields dealing with life and death. Uh, success in your career can be tied to uh, shared resources, investments, financial partnerships. You might work well with um, other people's money or managing joint assets. This placement uh, often indicates an interest in research and investigative work. Professions related to undercovering hidden truths, such as detective work or forensic science, can be very appealing to you. Your career can be involve uh, secrecy in intense uh, situations. You might excel in roles that require discretion in handling confidential information. Careers in psychology, therapy, healing might be favored. Uh, you have an innate understanding of the human psyche. The eighth house is associated with rebirth and reinvention. Your career may go through... Um, transformative phases and you're likely to merge stronger from each challenge. 
10th Lord in your 9th house. Uh, your career is likely to be uh, expansive and involve broad horizons. You might excel in professions related to travel, international affairs, or education, higher education. This placement often indicates a philosophical or spiritual approach to your career. You may seek meaning and purpose in your work. Success in your career can be linked to higher education. You might hold advanced degrees or work in academia, publishing, or fields that require deep understanding of complex subjects. Uh, professions involving travel, such as tourism or international business, may be appealing to you. You could have the chance to work in foreign countries or with people of diverse backgrounds. Uh, careers related to law, ethics, moral guidance could be favored by you. You may find success in roles that involve uh, upholding principles and values. Your career may require a global perspective and you could become involved in international or cross-cultural activities. 10th Lord in the 10th house. This placement signifies a strong focus on your career and ambitions. You're likely to be um, highly career-driven and motivated to achieve success in your chosen field. Your career's success is closely tied to the public recognition and your reputation. You may be known for your professional achievements and leadership qualities. You're inclined to take on leadership positions and uh, you may find success in uh, managerial or authoritative type roles. Your career path often involves position of authority. Uh, you might prefer to be self-employed or start your own business. Entrepreneurial endeavors are often favored by this position. Uh, your career is a significant part of your identity and your, uh, you may be driven to achieve your professional goals and make a name for yourself. You have the potential to leave a very lasting legacy through your career and impact your uh, chosen field in a meaningful way. 10th Lord in the 11th house. Your career may thrive through uh, extensive social networking and connections. Success often comes through collaborations and uh, group efforts. Your friends and associates and your acquaintances may play a significant role in your professional life. Uh, building strong relationships within your industry can lead to career opportunities. Professions related to technology, innovation, working with uh, progressive groups may be appealing to you. You're drawn uh, to forward thinking and unconventional career paths. You may find success in careers that involve working for the betterment of society, such as charities, humanitarian organizations, um, and other um, charity type groups. The 11th house is associated with long-term goals and aspirations. Your uh, career is often aligned with your vision for the future. You excel in collaborative work environments and thrive when working uh, with a team. Your career is likely to involve collective efforts. 10th Lord in the 12th house. Your career may involve working in less visible or behind the scenes roles. You might prefer to keep your professional activities private. This placement often uh, requires sacrifices for your career, whether it's in terms of personal time or anonymity. Your work may involve helping others without seeking any recognition. Uh, careers related to spirituality, psychology, counseling, health care, these are the careers you favor. You have an inclination towards healing and self-discovery. Uh, you may benefit from periods of isolation or retreat to recharge and reflect. Uh, this is essential for your well-being and your career success. Uh, your career may be um, taking you abroad to foreign lands or involve international affairs. You could have the opportunity to um, work in distant or secluded places. Um, you also possess uh, talents and skills that could keep you out of the public eye. Exploring and utilizing these talents can contribute to your success, your career success.